Welcome to the first module of the Re-Eroi Open Science course, Open Science from Data to Publications. This course is part of the Re-Eroi work package Open Science for Transparent Research and Public Engagement. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme. We are pleased that you are interested in our course and the topic of Open Science. In this first module, I would like to discuss the basic question of what we mean by open science and why open science offers many advantages for your research and your scientific work. My name is Max Heber and I'm a member of the University of Konstanz Open Science team. This module was developed by Matthias Landwehr, Head of Open Science at the Communication, Information and Media Center at the University of Konstanz. Let's look at this module's agenda. First, I will provide some insight into the history of open science and try to find a definition for open science. I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint you here because there is no such thing as the one universal definition of open science. After that, I will look at the concrete benefits of open science for research and teaching. And finally, we will take a look at further information sources. I would like to start with a quote by Michael Nielsen, a quantum physicist from San Francisco who committed himself to open science as early as in 2007. Open science is the idea that scientific knowledge of all kinds should be openly shared as early as is practical in the discovery process. For him, this means that as much as possible should be published transparently and made available to the general public as early as possible in the scientific process. Perhaps you know situations from your own research practice where data is not available, study results are not comprehensible or applicable, or situations in which you have to pay for the acquisition of publications. You can see from this relatively old quote that open science is not a brand new idea, but a movement that has been seminal for science for many years. Another important definition comes from the European Commission, which, as a major funding body in Europe, is driving the change to open science. It says, an approach to the scientific process that focuses on spreading knowledge as soon as it is available using digital and collaborative technology, expert groups, publications, news and events. The EU's open science strategy and definition is also available in a longer document. Another quote taken from the 2014 German language Open Science AG mission statement offers a somewhat more practical perspective and defines open science as the bundling of all strategies and procedures that are suitable for an open and transparent scientific process. A more current definition comes from KOWI, European Liaison Office of the German Research Organizations. Here, open science is seen as a collective term for the adaptation of digital technology that is intended to change both the research culture and the research process. Here, particular emphasis is placed on the impact beyond the science system, that is, with regards to economy and society. As you can see, there are various definitions with various dimensions, foci and layers, and you are, of course, free to find your own definitions. The three definitions mentioned in this module have stood the test of time. One driver for open science is the European Union. As early as in 28, the EU introduced an open access policy as a pilot measure in terms of research funding. In the following funding programs, Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe, open science activities were further strengthened. Currently, the European research policy is especially committed to open access publishing, the FAIR principles and open science. You will learn what the individual terms mean in the course of this module and the advanced course. Common to most definitions is an agreement on certain basic principles and elements that shape and characterize open science. The four basic principles are transparency, reproducibility, reusability, and open communication. Reproducibility and reusability refer primarily to research data and research results. Reproducibility means that the available data can be used to construct and recalculate study results. Reusability refers to the use of existing data in another context. Transparency and open communication, especially of failures should run through the entire research cycle. All four principles are directly directed towards the reuse of scientific results and data. 
The elements that belong to open science can also vary depending on the use definition. I would like to introduce you to six elements that can be found in most definitions and descriptions. We will look at some of them in more detail in other modules of this course. The best known feature is certainly open access, the free and unrestricted access to scientific information and publications, which has been widespread in many disciplines for many years. There are different levels. The most important ones are green, gold and diamond open access. Ideally, both the publication process and the public access are free of charge, so neither the author nor the reader has to pay. The term open data and research data management encompass all aspects of handling research data throughout the entire research data lifecycle. Ideally, there is a data publication at the end of the process. The FAIR principles, which I have mentioned before, play an important role here. As you will see later in the course, this can involve very different types and scopes of data. Open educational resources as the third element describes the creation and provision of free and open educational materials for use in teaching. There are several other core elements of open science. You may have come across the term open source before in the context of the open source operating system Linux or other free software products. It refers to the free provision of a software's or some other technology's source code. Open peer review aims to replace the conventional peer review process as we know it from journal publishing with an open and transparent review process. Last but not least, there is the field of citizen science and science communication. Both have the goal of connecting science with the general public. This includes the preparation of results in a form that people can connect with, but also the involvement of lay people, for instance, in data collection. We will look not at these terms in greater detail. Let's now look at the impact of open science on academia. The open science concept, open by default, and as open as possible, as close as necessary, is a fundamental change of the science system in which researchers have tended to keep their own data and results under wraps for a long time in order not to jeopardize their reputation. The European Union, as previously mentioned, is a driving force in this transformation towards a larger extent of openness and transparency. The EU is trying to find new metrics that attempt to assess research quality without the impact factor. In addition, strong efforts towards incentive systems are performed to yield demonstrable benefits for scientists who, for example, publish their data and follow the principles of open science. By now, you will certainly have asked yourself why you should care about all of this. This slide collects a few typical arguments that we encounter again and again that appear reasonable at first glance. Of course, we all know about the scarcity of resource time in science. Nevertheless, we would like to try to support the change in mentality towards open science and provide some arguments in favour. The availability of your publication and your data generally increases your own visibility as well as that of your research. The impact factor may be important, but it should not be the only gold standard. Moreover, data sets can be provided with permanent identifiers and thus become citable. By making your data available, you allow for their reuse. In turn, you can use other scientists' data in the context of your own research. It is about giving and taking. The reuse can and will lead to new insights, not only in your own subject, but also in other disciplines. Finally, good data management increases the efficiency of your work. Transparent workflows simplify collaboration. Besides the benefits which open science offers to the individual, the movement will and should change science as a whole. We want to support this change in mentality and culture, but we are aware that it will take time. Data is becoming an increasingly central part of our society, and the anchoring of data and science in society should be advanced as a goal. Overarching highlights in the two most important areas are the leading information platform Open Access Network and Forschungsdaten Info in Germany. There is Team Open Science at the University of Constance, which is anchored in the KIM. If you would like to delve deeper into the topic, you can do so on the KIM website. We will be happy to advise you individually in all questions relating to open science. You can also subscribe to a university mailing list on open science via our website. 
I would like to briefly discuss the two focal points of our work. In the area of open access, we take a leading role in the German university landscape. We help you find the right journal, we advise you and can also provide financial support with the publication fund. In addition to advice, we also offer various services, for example, in terms of the storage of research data. Storage both in the research process and for publication and archiving in a suitable repository. Another service offered by the university is the Advanced Data and Information Literacy Track, an interdisciplinary program for data and information literacy. This new offering, which came about as a result of the funding for excellence, is aimed at students of all subjects. Under certain circumstances, you can have this course credited towards the adult. More information on this can be found in ILIAS and on the adult website. This is the end of Module 1. In the overview, you can take a look at the other exciting modules that we still have in store for you in this course. Here are the sources for the images we used. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question or any concerns, please feel free to contact your institutional library at any time.